Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Professor Michael and you're watching Kini Flash. The High Court in Kuala Lumpur has granted Najib Abdul Razak a discharge not amounting to an acquittal over three money laundering charges. On January 28, the former Premier was slapped with the three additional charges under the Anti-Money Laundering and Anti-Terrorism Financing Act 2001. Judge Muhammad Nazlan Muhammad Ghazali made the order after allowing Attorney General Tommy Thomas' application for a discharge not amounting to an acquittal for the three charges. Najib was represented by Muhammad Shafi Abdullah, who was shocked by the AG's move. It is completely uh, bonkers. Okay? But this is what the prosecution did today. After I mean that time, I asked for time last week to answer today, we came fully prepared. Most of us did not sleep because we got very little time to prepare. Because we have to prepare the trial, we have to prepare the appeal this afternoon and tomorrow, and we have to prepare the main, main trial on the, uh, uh, on the 12th. Okay? So today is also another preparation. So we didn't sleep. We came in. The Attorney General dropped a bomb on us and said, uh, we want to make it easy. We want to withdraw the new charges that we prefer. In his submission earlier, Thomas said there was an argument on whether there should be a joinder with the other charges. Thomas added that Najib would be charged over the three counts of money laundering before the Sessions Court on a later date. So anyway, they stood up, they say, we want to withdraw the three new charges because we think it will be better for the, for, the, for the case so that there is no delay on the trial. But if you have got that in mind and if you are a decent Attorney General, shouldn't you tell us a lot earlier so that we don't have to prepare? So that we concentrate on preparing the main case. Isn't that correct? Yeah? So what is your intention? Are you trying to sabotage us in our preparation of the main case? Deputy Foreign Minister Marzuki Yahya has clarified that his degree in business administration is from the US-based Cambridge International University and not the University of Cambridge in the UK. He explained that his critics misunderstood his credentials and said that he was doing logistics before joining politics. So he took the certificate for his knowledge to expand the business. The Bersatu Secretary General's academic credentials fell under the spotlight after a police report was lodged over claims that he had lied about getting a degree from the University of Cambridge. He reiterated that he would provide evidence of his academic qualifications to the police once he is called for questioning and added that all allegations against him are malicious and meant to tarnish his reputation. A Google search revealed that there are two institutions going by the name Cambridge International University. One is a US-based university registered in Delaware, while the other is based in Spain with an office address in Florida. Both universities have different crests. However, the websites for both universities raise questions on the credibility of each institution. Following this, AMNO Acting President Muhammad Hassan said the Bursatu Secretary General should tender his resignation if he has any dignity, according to the Star. Similarly, AMNO Youth Chief Ashraf Wajdi Dusuki said the issue is not about Marzuki's academic qualification, but integrity. Meanwhile, MCA President Wee Ka Siong trained his guns on DAP lawmaker Ong Kian Meng over the controversy surrounding the Bersatu leader's academic credentials. In a statement this afternoon, we noted how Ong, when he was a member of the opposition, had been vocal about the academic qualifications of BM lawmakers. We said it is strange that Ong is now silent and lacks the courage to speak up. We said Ong, who is now the Deputy International Trade and Industries Deputy Minister, should expose the scam if Marzuki was not being honest about his academic qualification. The MCA leader appears to be on a roll today. He also published photographs depicting past President Abdul Hadi Awang with DAP leaders including Secretary General Lim Guaneng on his Facebook page. This comes in the wake of Lim Ketsiang attacking Wee for defending Amno's corporation with DAP's former ally Pass. Wee said Ketsiang claimed that the current Pass is not the same Pass that DAP worked with once upon a time in history. He added that what he meant by once upon a time in history is the year 2015. We said Ketsiang seems to have a short memory 
So he said he'll get someone to print out, frame and send the picture to Lim so that he can hang it in his office to remind himself whenever he feels the need to pretend to forget. The Malaysian government is eyeing proceeds from the recent multi-million dollar sale of a stake in the Park Lane Hotel in New York involving the US Department of Justice to an Abu Dhabi sovereign wealth fund. A source close to the matter told Malaysia Kini that the intention was for the money to be returned to the Malaysian government. That's the intention, the source said when asked if the money, 140 million US dollars or 571 million ringgit, was part of the alleged stolen 1MDV funds to be returned to Malaysia this year, as said by Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng. The minister had said this during a press conference last month but declined to reveal the source of the repayment or the exact amount. The sale of the hotel stake was made possible after fugitive financier Joe Loha agreed to withdraw his claim to the hotel to facilitate the sale to the Abu Dhabi State Fund Mubadala Development Company last November. And that is all from me today. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. Please subscribe and share this video. I'm Prasad Michael. Thanks for watching and good night.